Hello, John Cole once again. How are you? Well, firstly, we want to talk about the ceasefires in Northern Ireland. Are they going to hold out? That is the million dollar question. Right, we have Jerry Fitt here. Jerry Fitt, what about the question of decommissioning <coughs> weapons? Who do you think should be in charge of that? Well, uh, I'm sure Colonel Gaddafi would give you a few bob for the weapons after all. That's where they came from. Uh, on a sale return basis, of course, like. Well, Ian Paisley, uh, what do you think should uh, happen here? How do you think the handling of the weapons should be dealt with? Well, I think they should take all their weapons, the paramilitaries, that is, to the local auctions to see who would buy the weapons back again. Then you would know who's going to start the war again. Handing in its weapons is not the only answer. I mean, let me tell you this here. Everybody wants the IRA to hand in their weapons. So what do they do? Hand them in. Sure, they'll just go and make more, and then, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we'll be back to square one. What you need to do is take their arms and their fucking hands off them to prevent this happening again. Right, well, we do have the Sinn Féin president in Jerry Adams. Jerry Adams, what do you say about that? Well, um, let me tell you now, I think that uh, is a bit ridiculous. Um, wanting to take the IRA weapons and their hands off them is going a bit far. Well, there's no need for you to worry about your hands, Mr. Adams. You couldn't make the fucking bed in the mornings, never mind an armalite. Right now, Dr. Pizzi, tone it down. Let's go to John Hume. John Hume, have you any uh, suggestions for this decommissioning of weapons? Well, we want to bring both traditions together on this issue. So I think we should load up a massive cargo boat, take all the weapons and explosives into the middle of the Irish Sea and dump them all there. And then we can forget about the whole issue. And then the IRA's scuba diving squad enters the Irish Sea to retrieve them again. Do you think I come up the fucking lagging in a bubble, Mr. Hume, for God's sake? You'd certainly have no problems floating, Mr. Pizzi, that's for sure. Uh, now, Mr. Hume, talk back to me like that again, and I'll hit you that many times you'll swear you're surrounded. Um, hold on a minute. Could I possibly make a suggestion here? Fuck, wait till you hear this here. The bearded brother of Bielsey Bob with a rough Harris lookalike has something to say. Actually, I was told I look more like Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester the fucking cat more like it, Adams. Get on with it. Right now, Jerry Adams, what was your suggestion there? Well, I think we need, or we should keep all our weapons. Then, that way, no one is arguing about what to do with them. If we hold on to them, then there's no argument. Well, I don't know whether that's a valid point or not, but uh, Sir Patrick Mayhew... The Secretary of State for Northern Ireland is in with us tonight. Sir Patrick Mayhew, what do you suggest is the way forward on this issue? Well, may I say that uh, all the paramilitary weapons should be handed over to be destroyed by means of which everyone uh, should be satisfied. And uh, that would mean, therefore, that we have a continued uh, peaceful dialogue. And uh, without the threat of someone getting around in the fucking head... Uh, for disagreeing with the other. So that is what I think we should do, is decommission the weapons, and therefore we can move forward uh, as soon as we possibly can in the interest of everyone. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, would you be happy with that? Well, so long as I don't have to give up my personal weapon, because, I mean, I do have one. Let me tell you this here, Mr. Fitt. You wouldn't know if your gun fired bullets or hard peas for fuck's sake. I'd think no matter what at first you'd still miss anyway with eyes like that. Well, if the target was as big as you, Mr. Pease, you'd do it very much at fucking miss. Right, I'll slap your fucking face. Mr. Pease, I'm going to tell you no me, you be fucking... Now, hold on, gentlemen. Give it all right, Mr. Adams. You think you're running the fucking show here, but you're not. Uh, Dr. Pease, getting slightly off the subject, I seen your daughter Rhonda yesterday, just as a matter of interest. How is her painting coming along? Well, I don't uh, think that's anything to do with what, what we're talking about. Uh, uh, well, let me tell you this. Her paintings are not coming along. Frankly, Mr. Cole, I have a dog named Bishop, and his turds have more artistic merit than Rhonda's paintings. Oh, I see. I take it you called your dog Bishop for religious reasons. Is that right? Uh, not at all, Mr. Cole. It's because he once fucked a bitch, and it took us years to find out that he was the father. So that's why uh, uh, he was called Bishop. Oh, well, I see. Right. Well, I think Casey might have been a better name for him, to be honest with you. Right, 
in, Paisley. First and foremost, do you condemn the actions of the loyalists before and after the 12th of July during the drum crease standoff? Certainly not. Uh, 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 I condemn the RUC and uh, the so-called British Army who fueled that situation. Uh, and I blame the residents of the Garfaki Road for not compromising. I mean, they should have uh, uh, brought uh, us tea and sandwiches down for nothing instead of charging us. I mean, uh, we made Drum Cree a fucking tourist attraction. I am not going to uh, uh, condemn anybody. Right, well, do you not condemn the Loyalists rioting and looting? I certainly do not. Uh, right, well, do you not think that the Loyalists started it or was it started by nationalists? Well, Jerry Adams, you answer that. Well, uh, um, it was started, obviously, by Loyalists. Uh, it's a disgrace. And I, I, I can't say that I'm surprised with what uh, Ian Paisley has come out with. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Ian Paisley and Sammy Wilson, the stripper Sammy Wilson, uh, incited violence to get their own way. Right, well, John Hume, who in your opinion started all this trouble? Well, I think it was fucking Keen Billy. Look, what we need to do is compromise and understand each other's uh, way of thinking. We need both sections of our community well, for to get together. Would you change your record now? You're... Right now, come on, Jerry, let him speak. Go ahead, John Hume. Well, you see, this is exactly what the problem is. We can't get agreement. And by agreement, we need everybody and all our sections right, to Mr. agree. Right, Mr. Hume, I agree with Jerry Fitt. I think you should change the fucking record. Right now, the Reverend William McRae, the standoff at Drum Cree cost the security forces an estimated £10 million. Pounds. How do you account for that? Well, let me tell you something, son. It never cost me a brass penny. Uh, all it cost me was my right to walk down there uh, at the Gavraki Road. That's all it cost me. But at the end, we succeeded in walking down there. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, do you think these flashpoint marches should be banned? Well, uh, I must admit, I, I do have a bit of sympathy for the Orangemen. Uh, every road they want to march on, they have to ask permission. Um, I mean, what happens if an orange man wants to go down and buy a pint of milk at uh, uh, his, his shop? And it's up at the Catholic end of the town. Does he have to go and have a fucking residence meeting before he gets a pint of milk? And I mean, if that's the case, uh, if Jared Race is there, it looks like the orange man will be drinking fucking black tea for the rest of his life. <laughs> Dick Spring, what, ca what can we do to prevent these flashpoint marches and parades? Well, I, I think the people in Northern Ireland uh, will have to negotiate the right to march uh, wherever they want. What has it got to do with you, Dickie? This is not your concern or your business. So why don't you get out of Ulster, get on an Ulster bus and go down to Dublin where you belong? Right now, come on, Jerry Adams, do you think the Orangemen will get something sorted out for next year's marching season? Um, not unless Hoover's giving away free flights in July. Um, I can't see it uh, being resolved. Uh, they wouldn't like it. Now, let me put it to them. They wouldn't like it if the Republicans... Um, were to march down the Newton Ard Road. Well, uh, I don't know about that, Mr. Adams. I think the Protestant community uh, would relish uh, uh, at the thought that you would want to uh, come down to the Newton Ard Road. So why don't you go ahead and arrange it, son? But make sure you bring your crash helmets. Jerry Fitt, who do you think is responsible for this log jam? Well, I think the OUC and their heavy-handed ways towards people. I mean, the OUC uh, are best. For example... They fired 300 uh, baton rounds uh, at Protestants compared to 2,500 at Catholics. So I think the OUC were trigger happy in nationalist, nationalist areas and uh, there should be a ban on plastic bullets and they should learn the RUC arm to arm combat. Jerry Adams, uh, w would that be your sentiments? Well, for the first time, Jerry Fitz got something right. Um, the, the, the RUC uh, should fight arm to arm uh, and man to man, but they don't. Right, but, but the nationalists, Jerry Adams, weren't exactly fighting bare-fisted either. I mean, I saw one particular gentleman with a baseball bat in his hands. Um, but that particular fellow was uh, playing a game in the park. On what? How to take an RUC man's head off his fucking shoulders? Well, that's the name of the game. Sir Patrick Mayhew, do you not accept along with the British government the blame for, for overturning a serious decision on letting the Orangemen walk down the Gervaki Road? No, we do not make... Any apologies for mass disruption, injury, uh, destruction or intimidation. That was the fault of the IOC. I, I beg your pardon, I mean, oh, I meant the nationalist and the loyalists alike. I mean, uh, c could you tell me exactly what uh, JCB was doing down at Drum Cree? I wasn't there to uh, 
uh, uh, dig up some roads or whatever else. It was purely there to provoke serious riots. No, the JCP was sir to dig your grave, son, if you'd have came anywhere near that place. But unfortunately, you didn't. Right, now, Dr. Pacey, some Catholic business has made soup and stew and sandwiches and whatever else for the orange man. What do you say to that? Well, uh, uh, the soup was nice. The stew was stinking. Uh, 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 and all I got in my sandwiches was butter. So I wasn't too pleased. But having said that, if they had a made way as quick as they made sandwiches, none of this would have happened. Jerry Adams, do you think David Trimble helped matters? Uh, no, he did not. Uh, he stirred the shade up and provoked the nationalist uh, people. Uh, running around like a hard man with uh, a silly mobile phone in his hand instead of uh, getting in the dialogue through the proper channel. Well, that's all we've got to say on this matter for now. Thank you. I want to ask our panel first and foremost about Sammy Wilson's amazing photographs that were uh, appearing in a Sunday newspaper, namely the Sunday World. Was it right for them to publish them or not? Jerry Adams, I want to ask you first and foremost. Well, well, um, I think it just shows the hypocrisy of Sammy Wilson and the DUP. Um, uh, he was the one that voted in favour of barring nude bathing on nude beaches in Northern Ireland and Ireland. And uh, for him... Uh, to run about with his magic wand hanging about as an insult to his party faithful. Uh, right, Ian Paisley, what's your view on this? Well, well, uh, let me say that uh, Jerry Adams uh, has the audacity to say that Sammy Wilson is a hypocrite when in natural fact he's the biggest hypocrite here. I mean, he told us 22 months ago that there was a ceasefire. Then the next thing is... He tells the boys to take their suits off and uh, put their working clothes on, i.e. their balaclavas, and go and blow up the Canary Wharf. Um, um, excuse me, Dr. Pesey. Um, I didn't say anything like that at all. I told them to keep their suits on. Um, sorry, I mean, I was not involved at all uh, in that crisis. Uh, I never knew that bomb was taking place. Right, well, Dr. Pesey, we'll cover that issue in a while. But uh, back to Sammy Wicked Wilson. Did these nude photographs affect your votes in the last election in May? No, they certainly did not uh, affect the votes at all. Uh, they affected Rhonda, though, the daughter, because uh, uh, she put a couple of the pictures uh, of uh, Sammy Wilson on her dartboard and uh, threw a couple of darts at his private parts. Uh, prick to prick, if you know what I mean. Well, I don't see how she could actually put darts on his prick, Dr. Paisley, when it was clearly censored. Well, uh, as you know, Mr. Cole, there was three negatives missing. Uh, and we'll not say any more about that. Right, well, Jerry Fit, I want to ask you, do you think the press was right to publish these photos? Oh, fuck I. Um, I wish I had been taken a photographs. Mind you, you'd have needed a steady hand, and I don't think I'd have been able to manage that there, to be honest with you. Right, well, do you think it affected the votes, though, for the DUP? Well, who would vote for that bum there? I mean, he's just an arsehole. He shouldn't have been running around with that bollocks hanging out anyway. He hasn't got what would tickle a mouse, for God's sake. But the fact that he was over in France, Lord Fit, uh, on holidays, does that not lighten matters a bit for him? No, it does, Ned. I don't see why he's running around naked. It doesn't matter where you're filling in about. He let the people of Northern Ireland down and his party down. Right, well, that's okay. John Hume, what's your opinion on this whole escapade? So long as it does not cause offence. If Sammy Wilson wants to run around naked, that's up to Sammy. But in, in, in causing offence to people, then I think he needs to keep his clothes on. Don't forget, all our people have to respect each other's traditions. We all have to live on this island as oh, one. For fuck's sake, somebody turn that slurry pit off for God's sake. Right, now, we want to interview you, Dick Spring. Uh, Dick Spring, would this sort of behaviour be accepted in the south of Ireland if politicians were to run around stark naked? Uh, certainly not. I think they're very respectable politicians, and indeed, uh, if that sort of carry-on was to take place, then that politician uh, would be removed from the office uh, without hesitation. Well, let me tell you this, Dickie. Let me remind you, son, when Charles Hockey, the then uh, Prime Minister, was doing his gun-running act, nobody was too quick to put him out of his office. Why was that? Well, I, I, to be honest, I, I was not aware of that uh, sort of thing taking place. And I'm sure he was doing it with his clothes on anyway. Well, let me tell you here. Let me say this to you. You're the only one that didn't know. But I suggest that you are telling lies. 
the men, I'll tell you now, we, 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 we couldn't uh, expect anything else from a Dublin government aid. Now, Dr. Paisley, we're talking about Sammy Wilson here and not Charles Hawkey. I'm fed up talking about him. It's been a pain in my backside and my daughter's backside uh, for too long, and I don't mean that literally, of course. Uh, we're just fed up with him. Right, well, Jerry Fit, it's a matter of uh, keeping your clothes on, isn't it? Here, hello, I, mean, I never took my fucking clothes off. No, I mean Sammy Wilson. Oh, uh, yes, so I keep them on them a lot, but happy. Uh, I mean, let me tell you something, I would never have done that day. Well, let me tell you something, Jerry, you couldn't afford to go to France in the first place to strip. Let's just sit it down here, gentlemen. We have Sir Patrick Mayhew, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland here. Sir Patrick Mayhew, would you run about bollock naked in France? No, oh, I certainly would not. And uh, why should I run about bollock naked in France when I can run about bollock naked in England? Um, when you're in the public eye, and I uh, don't mean that literally... Uh, when you're in the public eye, you will have uh, more focused, uh, more focus uh, upon you by the British media, the radio, and the press, etc. Surely, Sir Patrick, the press or the media never took those photographs of Sammy Wilson. Obviously, Sammy had a camera with a ten-second or a twelve-second delay, and uh, before they actually took the photograph, he went and posed, and therefore he took the photographs himself. Well, in that case, that's his own fucking fault, and I have no sympathy. For a man who's meant to represent the Democratic Unionist Party, if he wants to run around bollock naked, then that's fucking his problem. Jerry Adams, do you think Sammy Wilson should remain or will remain in the DUP? Well, um, uh, I don't know, and I don't care, but uh, I do know what the new DUP stands for, and that is Democrats undressed publicly. Right, now, on a final note, Dr. Paisley, do you think the press should have published photos of uh, Sharon Rivers also? I thought it was a bit unfair. Yes, of course, because uh, she must have uh, she must have known the risks involved in fleshing her Jerry Fitz in public. You're fucking hell on. Keep me here to this. Willie McCray, I'm going to ask you, why do you think Sammy took his clothes off? Well, it's certainly very hot in the south of France. Do you think the DUP should have reprimanded Sammy Wilson for this? Certainly not. It's not the DUP that's selling Ulster down the river. It's David Trimble and the Ulster Union is... Willie, well. Willie, fuck's sake, stick this thing in for fuck's sake. Um, I, I think you'd do a better job. Have you stuck this thing in instead of coming off with the same old rhetoric all the time? Uh, who do you think you're talking to, Mr. Adams? I'm not sitting here with a gun in my hand under the table. Uh, nor am I. Right now, come on, gentlemen, for fuck's sake, settle it down a bit. John Hume, try and sort this out. Right, what we need here is dialogue from both sections of our communities. Both traditions need to respect each other's opinions and culture, and we must move Listen forward. to the fucking uh, white Martin Luther King. Uh, I won't get a hair cut, you scruffy get. If you can't manage your hair, uh, your throat will do nicely if you want to get both of them cut. It'll do me all right. Come on now, gentlemen. This is getting a little bit out of order. Right now, we're going to move away from the politicians and speak to Barry McGuigan. Barry McGuigan, obviously you've been affected by the press in more ways than one. Do you think this will have a strain on Sammy Wilson? Well, uh, I was straining to see what it was he had uh, in those photographs. Uh, it's bound to have an effect on Sammy because, I mean, I wouldn't like everyone to see my burrows. Fuck's sake, we'll have a fucking case here, all right. A fucking nutcase. Chris Eubank, you have had bad press as well. The press have invaded your privacy. How do you think Sammy Wilson feels about these photographs and that? Well, let me say this here. That I feel very sorry for Sammy Wilson because, um, he decided to sue a newspaper because his penis is too small. Um, the fact that if Sammy Wilson had have had a big penis... Um, he wouldn't have sued the newspapers because um, I think he's just embarrassed and that's why he's decided to uh, sue the newspaper. So, I mean, I ask you, Chris, if you were in the, the south of France on holiday with a big school teacher such as Shan, would you have went bollock naked? Well, let me say this here. I don't think my wife Sandra would have uh, allowed me to do this because she would have objected very strongly. Well, I think we've said enough on this issue, but just food for thought... Sammy Wilson brings a whole new meaning to the school dinner spanking sessions, as I'm sure you've all read about. He's the one that objected to the light-hearted fun and entertainment being dished out and indeed got the boot into Sandy Blair and Junior Walker over this incident. But I think both of these gentlemen have had the last laugh. Do you? <laughs> Is the ceasefire paying dividends in Northern Ireland or is it not? 
Now, Sir Patrick Mayhew, if I may come to you on this one first, is the ceasefire giving everyone their just desserts? Well, of course it is. I mean, many lives have been saved, and uh, there's a lot of inward investment in Northern Ireland, and the job prospect in Northern Ireland are looking very good indeed. Uh, The problem we do have is that people will lie on in their beds in the morning, playing with Pam, instead of getting up and going out to find some work. Right, well, Ian Paisley, would you go along with uh, what he says? Uh, Certainly not. Let me say this here. The trouble with the ceasefire is builders are going out of business because no one's blowing them up. Then we have the glazers who are not having to replace glass. They have lost contracts. And then we have the undertakers fucking yapping their heads up because there's no stiffs about, except when Junior Walker and Sandy Blair are about. And then uh, 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 the price of houses is an absolute disgrace. I tried to move my son Ian Junior out of the house to get him to buy a house on the Newton Arts Road. He later told me they have risen from 15,000 pounds to 42,000 pounds. I had to ask him if he was on the right road. I thought he was at Malone Road. So as far as I'm concerned, the ceasefire ha- has done a lot of people out of work. People cannot buy houses. And I don't think uh, 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 people are benefiting from the ceasefire. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Paisley, uh, for your comments there. Uh, well, Jerry Adams, is it all doom and gloom uh, for you with the ceasefire is concerned? Well... I'm allowed to talk for a start, um, which is good. Um, I also uh, have my visa to go wherever I want. Um, We, I and Sinn Féin, got border roads open again. Um, We got the army off the streets of Belfast, thank God. Uh, Well, let me tell you this here, Mr. Adams, you'll not get the Protestants off the streets of Belfast. I I am not. I am not trying to do that. You're a lad, dirty rat. Don't be giving me that. Hey, Mr. more than I fucking relax, for God's sake. Right, as I was saying, um, there are more demands uh, to be met by John Major and his band of cronies. And what are the rest of these demands then, Jerry Adams? What more are you seeking from the British government? Well, I and Sinn Féin want all... Television detector vans out of West Belfast by noon. Um, oh, I didn't know you Catholics had televisions. That's a real luxury there, isn't it? Uh, I and Sinn Féin want Ulster bus changed to Irish bus. You shouldn't get buses at all, Mr. Adams. You're never done fucking burning them out. And you want the name changed? There's no way you're getting the names of buses changed. Right now, continue on, Jerry Adams. Uh, Sinn Féin and I want the banning of all the Reverend William McRae CDs. They're fucking awful. Uh, we also want the Magic Roundabout. Uh, this is a very serious one. Uh, we want the Magic Roundabout translated in Gaelic. I personally want an increase in my dole money of £20 a week. And I want it backdated from 1972, if that is possible. And if these demands are not met, what is going to happen? Well, I think you better ask John Major and Patrick Mayhew that. Right now, the next subject which we want to talk about is very close to everyone's heart and their mouths. Uh, in this country, which is drugs. It's become very, very serious in Northern Ireland. Well, I personally think so myself. Uh, Jerry Fitt, I mean, I want to know, is the problem as severe as the press and the media make out? Well, it is a severe problem. Um, We can't get our fucking hands on them. Uh, No, seriously, it is bad and it's out of control. And I blame the paramilitaries because they are flogging drugs outside schools. Some drug traffickers have even been seen outside nurseries. And uh, then they are, you see. They're making drugs raids one minute and fucking selling them the next. And I don't think the RUC are handing all the uh, drugs in. Um, uh, they're, they're taking them themselves. I mean, I was stopped and strip searched outside the city hall. Fuck, that was a sight to behold. Mind you, I mean, I don't mind saying. I mean, I've tried tablets before myself. I mean, I took two A tablets. And uh, to be honest, they don't fuck all for me, only cure my head. 
What do you what what do you mean A tablets, uh, Lord Fit? What may I ask are A tablets? Um, they're anodent. They're in the uh, wee yellow packet through the air. <laughs> Sir Patrick Mayhew, is there evidence to support Jerry Fitz's accusations against the RUC? Are they true? Are they taking illegal drugs? Well, I uh, honestly don't think uh, Mr. Fit knows what the fuck he's talking about. Uh, here, uh, the the there has been uh, no single uh, complaint brought against the IUC for drug taking, and uh, if he wants to see the files, he will certainly see the files. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, there has not been one single member of the IUC uh, brought to justice for taking illegal drugs because there simply uh, is no foundation in that statement. Well, I have a friend whose house was raided, and the IUC took drugs in. When I say taking drugs, Mr. Adams, I mean consuming them, you silly bastard. I'm not talking about taking them away. Well, that's exactly what I mean, precisely. Um, they raided his house and then consumed the drugs there and then. I fucking seen it. Right, well, Ian Paisley, I take it you're very much against drug taking and all the rest of it. Uh, what do you say to that? Well, uh, it depends on the drug. Uh, I mean, that is, uh, if it's cocaine or it's e-tablets or spack, uh, they, along with heroin, are very strong and dangerous narcotics. Uh, now, if you're talking about cannabis, I would say that uh, cannabis should be legalised because of the comfort and the relaxation you get out of it. Well, obviously you've tried this, Dr. Paisley. Oh, well, never mind that. I think it's great. In fact, I think the City Hall should issue joints to all party members, except Sinn Féin, that is, before all our meetings. Uh, I think uh, every member should be supplied with a joint. I take it you're not talking about bacon joints here either, Dr. Paisley. Now, Jerry Adams, a member of Sinn Féin from London Derry, I mean, we can't mention his name in case we get fucking sued left, right and centre, but he was caught taking drugs. We'll not mention his name, but why was he on drugs? Tell us all that. Well, um... Uh, obviously, that member was under pressure with his job. Um, carrying out knee cabins doesn't come easy. Um, so he had to uh, calm his nerves uh, by taking some um, uh, illegal drugs. Well, I'm sure the victim would have liked to have had some fucking dope also because he got his fucking right leg done as well. But, right, as you know, our guest in tonight is Chris Eubank. Have you ever uh, dabbled in drugs, Chris? Certainly not. I think, uh, I think drugs is a real killer. And anyone who supplies them should get their bollocks knocked in. Well, let me tell you this here, Mr. Eubank or Chris. By the sound of you, you've had a fucking ten deal down the back of your neck. You're talking like a wash machine, for God's sake. At least I'm not the width of a white missing. Don't speak to me like that, you black enamel batten rastard. Right, Dr. Pacey, for God's sake, give him a break. Don't think there's any need for that language. Right, gentlemen, John Hume, is the problem of drugs as bad as the press and the media well, I think there's a few in here taking drugs. Yes, I would say the problem has got out of hand. But some people say if the Lord Mayor's son can take them, then they can take them too. I personally don't touch them. I'm into wine, women, and bondage. Mind you, I don't make a habit of getting photographs taken with women whipping my fat arsehole. I just get on with it, get on with the job, and do it. I don't take drugs. Right, well, Jerry Fit, should all drugs be banned? All illegal ones, that is. Well, uh, I, how long to get a fucking drink of this here uh, gin here? Oh, fuck it. A bit strong out there. Because <coughs> it would be, there's no coke in it. Um, sorry about that, I didn't mean to be ignorant. Um, well, I think they all should be banned. I think they should be banned. Mind you, a lot of Belfast City councillors would miss them badly because a lot of them are taking all that sort of shit inside there and they're talking shit as well instead of talking shop. Ian Paisley, you accused Paul Daniels of uh, taking strong drugs. Why? Well, it's uh, very obvious. Uh, I'm sure you've read in the press reports and heard on the, the televisions. Uh, 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 for him to say that I wasn't a proper minister uh, is an insult. I mean, you can only but hear my religious overtones a mile off. And anybody uh, 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 that uh, knows me knows that I am a very religious minister. And uh, I am going to sue him and the papish BBC. Uh, uh, and I will not uh, tolerate 
him saying that I am not a minister. If he says I'm not a minister, he's not a fucking magician. I just hope he has a healthy bank account, that's all I can say. Well, I see it's a very sore point for you, Dr. Paisley. <laughs> Now, it might seem strange to some, but it's true that paramilitaries are using a point system to determine what sort of punishment gets dished out to the individuals. Now, just an example, for instance, if your son was caught breaking a window, the paramilitaries would come round and say to him, right, you've got 10 points against you. Now, if you go through the 50-point barrier, you're bollocksed. Now, Jerry Adams, is this true? Um, no, uh, it's normally 15 points for breaking a window. Uh, it depends whose window it was, of course. I mean, if it was your own window, for instance, I reckon the hurley sticks would be brought out. Um, since when did hurley sticks fire bullets? Uh, I don't think so. So are you saying this is a, a point system used by paramilitaries on both sides? Yes, there is. And, uh, before you criticise... I think this is a better method because uh, young hoodlums are, are getting a second chance uh, and indeed maybe a third chance. Ian Paisley, do you agree with this point system? I certainly do not uh, agree with this point system. The next thing I'll be introducing is uh, a yellow and red card, uh, a yellow for a booting and red for lead. I say leave it to the RUC and let them sort it out. What do you mean you want the RUC to sort out the kickings and start the shootings? I don't think so. Jerry Adams, do you think the RUC can handle thuggery? Um, maybe a bit of buggery, but I don't know about thuggery. Uh, here, here, we're talking about the RUC, Mr. Adams, not the dirty paedophile priests. Right, the Reverend William McCray will want to ask you, does this point system work? No, it certainly does not, because let me, let me say, you're only giving these gangsters a chance to do it again. And I suggest that it's, it's time to chop their hands off. I mean, they would look a bit funny breaking into people's houses. I'd love to see them trying to lift a television or a video then with their hands chopped off. Barry McGuigan, uh, could, you, could you think of a way that people could get away with, uh, without getting beaten up or whatever else? Well, here, uh, uh, they could uh, move country or uh, they could join a boxing club. And uh, that would keep them out of trouble, and it would give them something interesting to do. I like what, uh, knocking each other's bollocks in? Fuck sake, Barry, you're polluting the air. What they need to do is go and join the army. Well, well, if I can say, um, we have vacancies in the Belfast Brigade. And, and, and if anyone wants an application form, uh, we'll send it out to you, and you'll get an interview with uh, Alex Maskey. I think I'd rather have an interview with Saddam Hussein. Well, Jerry Adams, what criteria do you need to join the Belfast Brigade? Well, um, first and foremost, you need to be honest. Um, a, a, a non-smoker, and uh, preferably a non-drinker, but definitely a non-smoker because uh, one of our volunteers, uh, cigarette end, was a bit close to high explosives, and it proved to be highly costly. Um, he wasted the explosives which we weren't too happy about. Well, what about the gentleman in question who was smoking the cigarette? Well, we haven't seen him about, but, uh, we don't know where he is. But he may turn up at some point. Right, well, trying to take these young people to the streets doesn't really help John Hume, does it? Well, let me tell you something. If they're off the streets and in their houses, then they're okay. They're out of harm's way. What we need to do is get more community centres built. We need the government to put more money into into projects uh, for young people. Now, I really do think that this is the way forward. I mean, I've already said they should be off the street and in their Aye, houses. Whose fucking houses are they in? Some more poor fuckers' house, cleaning them out. That's what they're doing. Right, well, Jerry, if it does the point system work or does it not? Well, uh, yes, it does uh, work. I think it's a deterrent to try and stop these young hoods uh, from breaking the law. I mean, if I caught someone breaking into my house, I'd break his fucking legs for him. Right now, the, uh, the Reverend William McRae, is this point system going to work or not? No, it's certainly not going to work. And I've been at some of the families of these young men who've been beaten, with bars, sticks, and some have even had nails embedded in their skin. Well, Jesus Christ had nails embedded into his skin, and I don't hear anybody fucking yapping about that there. Ah, but hold on, they weren't at the end of the baseball bat, were they, Mr. Fit? Right, Sir Patrick Mayhew... We've covered this subject before, and you said that you're going to do something about it, you and the British government. We haven't seen any evidence of this. Well, the uh, plain truth is that the British government uh, forgot all about it. Uh, but we will find the time to deal with this issue, uh, preferably in the year 2000. <laughs>
Now, we want to talk about the increase of small businesses in Northern Ireland now that we've got the uh, ceasefire. Jerry Adams, will they stay open? Well, um, I want to know why you're asking me. I don't fund them. But you fucking blow them up, don't you? <laughs> well, now, Mr Cole, I've told you time and time again that I am not a member of the IRA. Um, it's peace I want, and I will do anything to get it. Well, Mr Adams, there's a train at 8 o'clock. Don't get on it. Get in front of it if you'll do anything for it. Well, if you stood in front of it, uh, you'd probably fucking rag it. Now, in with us tonight is the head of the IDB, which, of course, is the Industrial Development Board for Northern Ireland. That, of course, is John B. McGookin. Now, John B. McGookin, should I say? Yes, yeah, sorry. John B. McGookin, is there still plenty of money in the kitty for further expansion on the business front, or is it all running dry? Well, uh, th there's still a few quid left in the kitty, but uh, but uh, everybody needs to pull their weight and nut their plunkers and get up with their fucking lazy beds in the morning and come down and see us and, and, and we'll try and set them up in a business. And we don't want to hear from prostitutes, priests or Protestants. We don't want uh, anyone like that at all down to see us here because we will not give this money away to any Tom, Dick or Harry. Right, well, with Jerry Adams, there's still plenty of opportunities, isn't there? Well, um, there probably is. Uh, Mr. McGugan, um, what about a workshop for making uh, fireworks? Uh, light calibre, of course. Well, Mr. Adams, I, I, I don't think so. I think I think you've got more workshops and fucking corner shops, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, what we're looking for here is hard-working people. Uh, uh, we've got no time for lazy bastards scrounging of our company, and, and we will not tolerate that. Right, well, Sir Patrick Mayhew, no doubt the ceasefires are good for small businesses all round. Would you not think so? Well, indeed, I uh... Mr. McGookin has explained that uh, Northern Ireland uh, small business firms have expanded and we want to see that trend continue, especially in areas such as uh, uh, in most need, like the Anderson's Town, the Falls Road, uh, the Markets area and, of course, the, the Pearl Gas Estate. We want to see all those areas expand and uh, therefore go forward. Hold on, has Jerry Adams got a gun to your bollocks under this table? I never heard any Protestant areas being mentioned. Now, hold on, Dr. Pizzi. These areas are earmarked. Your fucking ears are marked if you don't shut up. Now, let me speak. I am speaking to Sir Patrick. Now, shut your... Right, now, give it over, for goodness sake. Jerry Fit. do you think the IDB are investing money into projects in the right areas? Or are Catholics still being discriminated against? Well, uh, as you know, us Catholics don't need to work. There's uh, plenty of post offices about... You mean a lot of Catholics draw the dole money? No, I mean the fucking rub them. All right, see, well, Jerry Adams, is that a fair assessment? Well, um, as you know, I don't rob them. And uh, anyone who says I do rob them um, are liars. No, that's because you got some other poor bastard to go and fucking rob them for you, Mr. Adams. I think we're all stupid or what? Well, uh, I and Sinn Féin uh, strenuously deny that. Um, but I think the IDB should build a large concert hall so that we can bring all people together um, to watch and enjoy bands such as the Pogues, um, Sinead O'Connor, and, uh, of course, the Cranberries. We, we want every... Oh, let me tell you this here, Mr. Adams, and let me make this abundantly clear to you. The God-fearing people of Belfast do not want an orgy of devil-worshipping and debauchery to take place in this so-called concert hall. These so-called musicians, singers and dancers spend all their time drinking, fornicating and drug-taking. Some of them have been taking so many drugs that they've been on more trips than the average Belfast city councillor, for fuck's sake. Don't be trying to tell me that we should have this built or that built. Don't tell us. Well, well, let me tell you this. is typical of Ian Paisy changing the subject again. Mr. Hume buttered of it. Right, right. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about briefly, John Hume, what Ian Paisley is getting at, he is saying about the free trips. We are talking about the council junkets. Um, a lot of Belfast City councillors were taking trips at the rate pairs' expense. Is that right, Mr Hume? Well, I thought it was a fucking disgrace. These unionist councillors were jetting all over the world. While the best a nationalist councillor could hope for is a free fucking flight from Hoover. I think that was absolutely deplorable. Well, it's good to hear that some Fenians are actually buying Hoovers at last. But Mr. Hume is talking through his horse again. He spends more time abroad than that woman out of the holiday show. And if you're talking, Mr. Hume, about Sammy Wilson, 
or Peter the Punt Robertson, and I said punt, I wouldn't mind paying an extra few pounds on my rates to send the pair of them in the orbit. One way, of course. Well, right. Well, now, we want to get back onto the subject in question which we were talking about, which, of course, is the boom in business in Northern Ireland. Finally, John B. McGugan, will there be more business, therefore more jobs? Well, uh, I certainly hope so, because uh, these fucking Japanese are trying to take over, uh, and the worst about it is, when they get in, they'll, they'll bring their own yellow-faced comrades over to do the work, and that means that uh, they'll be doing us out of work, and... Uh, if it comes to that, then we're going to have to go to Jerry Adams or someone to try and blow them out of fucking business because we don't want them coming over. Right, that's great, John McGugan. Thank you very much indeed for that there. <laughs> Well, now, the next subject on our itinerary, of course, is Jerry Adams' visit to the South Africa. Right now, Jerry Adams, you went over to South Africa to meet Nelson Mandela. Why? Well, um, when the ceasefires came about, um, Sinn Féin and I pledged there would be no more shooting. The guns would be silenced. So I went over to South Africa to hire out 500 Zulus to bring back to Northern Ireland. So if the troubles had been started by Protestant paramilitaries, I would have sent in 500 Zulus with their spears. At least Sinn Féin IRA would have kept their promise of sailing guns. Well, that's the biggest lot of fucking bollocks ever I've heard in my life. Well, whenever you met Nelson Mandela, what did he say to you? Well, I couldn't fucking make him out, to be honest with you. Um, well, maybe if he had been speaking South African Gaelic, You'd have made him out all right. Right, Ian Paisley, do you think Nelson Mandela had any influence on Jerry Adams whatsoever whenever he went over on this trip? Well, let me tell you this here. Uh, Mandela didn't have much of an influence on his wife, Winnie the Pooh, but Jerry Adams, being the leader of Sinn Féin IRA, I'm sure Nelson was up there to his black bollocks with Adams. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he is the black provo of... South Africa, and is not welcome in Northern Ireland under any circumstances whatsoever. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, what do you think Jerry Adams got out of his trip to uh, South Africa? Well, he probably got AIDS, clap gonorrhea, fuck knows what else. Uh, I don't think he got that much out of it, to be honest with you. Right, well, that's for do, Sir Patrick Mayhew. Do you think Mr. Adams achieved anything out of his visit to uh, South Africa and Nelson Mandela? Well... I don't think the spear chuckers of South Africa knew who Mr. Adams was. They probably thought he was Jeff Capes on a diet, for all I know. And I really do think it was a waste of time. And probably the taxpayers' money as well. Right, well, John B. McGurgan, do you think Jerry Adams could go out to South Africa and bring some companies back home here to invest? Well, he could bring back uh, Armalite Crackle and he could bring back companies... I don't trust him nor those fucking niggers that steal the eye out of your head and come back with your fucking highlights. Uh, what we want is good, strong manufacturers uh, that's going to work hard and have a good, steady workforce. I mean, we don't want a country overrun by spear chucking niggers. I'm sure Sir Patrick May, he would go along with that. Well, I don't want to be put in a position where I have to be truthful. But I do see that Mr. McGookin does have a, a very valid point. Right, well, that's fair enough. Uh, Jerry Adams, do you think... The South Africans should invest Northern Ireland. Did you say invest or invest? Um, I think the niggers, or sorry, I beg your pardon, the black uh, black workers uh, work harder than the whites. I have no objections to niggers, or beg your pardon, blacks working here in Northern Ireland. Right, but I'm sure the people you represent wouldn't approve of coons taking their, or sorry, nigger, or black, sorry, taking their jobs. Um, not really, because each black would be working for a Catholic white, um, for something like a pound a day, uh, and that uh, would be including overtime. Right, John Hume, is that system going to work here? Providing I get a nigger, it probably would work. Um, providing the darky is also a Catholic, I don't want a Protestant nigger. Well, that's fair enough. Jerry Fit, would you accept this idea? Well, I wouldn't worry about the nigger being a Catholic. So long as it was a woman. Yes, I think it's a good idea, but uh, I think a pound a day is fucking pushing it a bit like it's a bit much. Right, and finally, Ian Paisley, would this idea suit you, or would you be totally against it? 
Well, uh, uh, let me say this here uh, quite humorously, uh, Mr. Cole, if, uh, if, uh, if it was a female nigger, I would certainly be against her, all right. In more ways than one, I'd probably give her a pound a day uh, cash. <laughs> Let's discuss punishment beatings now. There's been an awful lot of them about, and indeed there's been the odd shooting. Uh, Jerry Adams, your influence is much needed to get Republican beatings and shootings stopped. Why has it not been stopped? Um, well, I never told them to stop, that's why. And let me say, we have to police our own areas because we don't have the confidence in the RUC. And uh, let me warn anybody who breaks the law in my estate, uh, they will get a warning shot to the back of the head. Uh, we will not take any prisoner. And um, it's just up to the individual to uh, behave himself. Well, that's fair enough. But, Mr Adams, why are they still using bullets? Tell me this. Why, why are they shooting? Well, Mr Cole, um, battery-operated drills are very expensive to buy. And uh, we don't have the luxury of having electric sockets attached to the entry walls. So the bullet comes into practice and uh, it's the only way to deal with them. Right, well, that's fair enough. Sir Patrick Mayhew, or, well, I don't mean it's fair enough, don't get me wrong, but I, I personally do think it is wrong. But Sir Patrick Mayhew, are punishment beatings on the increase, or are they not? Yes, uh, unfortunately they are. And uh, the, the problem is that... Uh, People, or victims, may I say, uh, often uh, don't report these incidents to the RUC. Therefore, the perpetrators get away scot-free, and uh, what they should do is come forward uh, to the RUC and uh, give them any necessary information they possibly can. And that way we can try and apprehend uh, the uh, culprits that are carrying out uh, very vicious beatings indeed. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, do you go along with Sir Patrick Mayhew's views there, go to the police and report it to the RUC? No, I don't. Um, surely if uh, the victim does tell the RUC, the first thing the cops say is, you must have deserved it. So I don't see the point in telling the RUC, because you only go down there, tell them, and, and then you're going to end up getting your bollocks knocked in again. So I think uh, if you have done wrong, and you get a boot in a bollocks or whatever else, then accept it, because you shouldn't have done wrong in the first place. Right, well, Dr Paisley, do you agree with that? Well, I sometimes wonder myself why some of these people uh, get kneecapped. I'm sure it's not for nothing, uh, but I'm certainly not saying that I support it. But I'm sure the paramilitaries are not going around the streets of Belfast or other parts of Northern Ireland to see who's got a nice set of knees for dismantle. Uh, these chaps, uh, obviously, get into trouble breaking into houses, pilfering and whatever else they're doing, and uh, therefore they, they, they deserve sometimes what they get, although I don't support it. Right, well, Dr. Pizzi, how, how do you think these beatings should be stopped? What do you think should, I mean, what do you think should be done to stop them? Well, that's a, a million-dollar question. I think you better ask uh, uh, Jerry Adams of this world that particular question. Well... I don't think it's going to stop. Um, it will uh, continue. And I envisage an increase. And, Mr Cole, can I appeal on your programme um, to the following people uh, to be in their houses tonight at nine o'clock? Um, Patrick McStavish, Jerry Weldon and Finbar McConaughey. Uh, those three chaps will be receiving a visit tonight, so they will, at nine o'clock. Are they going to get a beating tonight, Jerry Adams? Well, they owe the Republican movement uh, five pound each in dues, and if they don't have it, they may well get a beating. Well, I take it. Uh, I take it would only be a light rap over the knuckles for the sake of a fiver. Well, if you class a bullet in the side of the head as a light rap over the knuckles, um, I think you and I have a different outlook in life. But I, well, I think that's a bit ridiculous, Jerry Adams, that someone who doesn't pay their dues, are in arrears of a £5 note each, and are going to get a round in the side of the head. 
I'd hate to see what would happen if they owed you a hundred pound each. Mr. Adams, surely you'd want uh, all these beatings to stop before the visit of President Clinton. I take it you are looking forward to the visit. Um, indeed I am. Um, I hope the visit will help move the process forward and break the current impasse. Um, so you'll be you'll be t- you'll be talking to him about baseball, will you? Well, why do you ask that? Well, well, I believe the sport is very popular in Bally Murphy. I mean, that is judging by the number of people wandering around with baseball bats and so forth. I hope you're not trying to imply that Sinn Féin has anything to do with punishment beatings. No, not at all, Mr. Adams. I'm sure that, I'm sure that as president of the Sinn Féin or Sinn Féin, should I say, you'd have nothing to do with illegal activities. I was just wondering which team you'd support, the Andy Town ankle crushers or the Norglen kneecappers. Um, uh, I think we should draw a line here to this, Mr. Cole. Um, it's not helping to move the process forward. Right, well, Dr. Paisley, is it good news that President Clinton will be turning the Christmas tree on? Uh, certainly not. President Clinton couldn't turn his wife on, never mind a silly tree, uh, 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 as far as I'm concerned. Right, well, Jerry Fitt? Well, sure, anybody could put their finger on a switch. Jerry Adams? Yes, uh, even I could put my finger on a switch as well. A uh, fucking Mercury tilt switch. Let me tell you this here, Mr. Adams. We all would know what you're about, me all know what you're at. I take it you wanted the Power Rangers to switch the lights on instead of President Clinton, would that be right? Uh, well, I don't know about the Power Rangers putting the lights on. I wouldn't mind if Glasgow Rangers put them on. Uh, that would be very nice. Jerry Adams, I'm sure you'd be totally against the, the Glasgow Rangers coming over and putting the lights on. Well, now that Rangers are out of Europe, I'm sure they'll have uh, plenty of time to do silly things like that. Right now, we want to talk about the rerouting of orange parades. Now, Jerry Adams, we want to move on here and talk about these orange parades, especially from the Lower Armour Road. The residents are going absolutely spare about them. So what is your views on this? Well, we, I and Sinn Féin, want all marches to be banned, um, no matter who it's for or what it's for, um, whether it's for the black, the blue or the green. At least we want them all rerouted. And we want it done as soon as possible. Right, well, Ian Paisley, what is your view on this rerouting? Let me say this here. I have to laugh at Jerry Adams. He says ban all marches, no matter what it's for. But let me tell Mr. Adams, he's the first fucker out with his bin lid when it comes to the anniversaries of interment and any Sinn Féin protest marches that happens to take place. And let me say this here. He says that all orangemen should be rerouted, but I think it's the residents of the Armour Road that should be rerouted down to Dublin where they belong as far as I'm concerned. Oh, right, well, that's a bit strong, Sir Patrick Mayhew. What's your view on this? Well, uh, on the rerouting of uh, Catholics down to the south of Ireland, well, I don't think that would be uh, possible. The House and Executive uh, don't do transfers as far apart as that. But let me say, uh, if there can be a compromise made, uh, that would be great. After all, what we do want is a safer route. Why should we break with tradition? Surely the residents of the Armour Road could go to Port Rice for the fucking day, for God's sake. Jerry Fitt, what do you say about that suggestion? Well, uh, the last time I went to Port Rice on the 12th, I got my bollocks knocked in. Um, I just uh, think the people of the lower Armour Road will have to stand their ground. I wouldn't move out of my house for any fucker, I'll tell you that now. Well, let me tell you this here, Jerry. You weren't long moving when your house on the Antrim Road was being torched by your own lot. Isn't that right? Ah, but hold on, man. That's different. That was a that was a case of mistaken identity. They thought I was Seamus Mullen. Fuck's sake. No, no. That, uh, that's a different kettle of fish, all like, yeah. Now, we've, we've also had a couple of uh, special guests here tonight. One of them is Chris Eubank. Uh, now, Chris Eubank, you wouldn't be here only for the ceasefires. Now... You give up boxing, and you didn't give it up uh, so long ago, and uh, you're thinking of coming to Northern Ireland to live because the ceasefire is here and it's readily available for everyone to come and live here. Isn't that right? Yes, that is right. It is certainly a great country. Uh, now that we have the cessation of violence, 
I, I think it's uh, doing. Uh, uh, um, I think it's doing everyone very good. And uh, yes, I have been doing a bit of house hunting lately. Doing a bit of house hunting. Let me tell you this here. I want to know where you're planning to live because let me tell you this here. There's no way you're coming to live anywhere near Cypress Avenue, my lad. Well, let me say. Let me say this, Mister Paisley. I'm thinking of living at Malone Park. They're, they're very nice houses. You're a bit better off living up the Falls Road. They don't like niggers at Malone Park. Excuse me. I'm not a nigger. I'm a Negro. Like when I say you're a nigger, you're a... Right now, Dr. Pizzi, that, that is no way to talk to Chris Eubank. He's our guest tonight. Um, Jerry Adams, could you suggest somewhere safe for Chris Eubank to live? Yes, I can indeed. Um, if Chris wants to come, he can come up and live in the Andy Town Road. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll all look after him. No, thanks. Uh, I don't want to go up because I want to hold on to my wallet. You don't need to be so fucking cheeky, you yeah, thankless black bastard. I was only offering you accommodation and a safe house. Mr. Adams, you've had more houses than the fucking Cincinnati kid, for God's sake. What house is it you're talking about? Right now, Dr. Pizzi, never mind, because that's a, a, a security giveaway. you not hardly tell you that. Well, Chris, I'm sure you'll get sorted out with something. Uh, could you give me your views on this subject of rerouting marchers? I know you're not uh, very familiar with the politics in Northern Ireland, but just give me your own opinion. Well, I really don't know what to say because um, uh, I don't want to end up getting my bollocks sucked in. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know whose side to take. Well, I thought uh, Steve Collins already did that. Mind you, I wasn't too happy that a left footer knocked her bollocks in, but that's besides the point. Jerry Adams, I, I want to speak to you here. Uh, what have you got to say about that fight between Steve Collins and Chris Eubank? Well, us Catholics can show you prods how to fight and win. I uh, like you did in 1690, Mr. Adams. John Hume, is there any chance of both sections of these communities sorting out their differences over these orange marches? Well, I don't think it's time, and it's up to Ian Paisley to go and talk to his community and try and get them to reason. And that's the same for Mr. Adams. Uh, but quite frankly... I never won the Nobel Peace Prize. So as far as I'm concerned, you can all go and fuck the whole lot of you. <laughs> well, I don't think that's very nice. Jerry Fit, could you find a solution to this? I couldn't find my fucking glasses in the morning, never meant a solution. Well, why don't the orange men and the lower Orma Road residents toss a coin to see if the orange men march or not? Let me tell you this here, Mr. Fit. We are talking about a tradition. That goes back hundreds of years. We're not talking about tossing a coin to see who kicks off in a fucking football match, you goatee. Well, to change the subject, Mr. Adams, could you explain to the viewers your party's policy on homosexuality? Well, I can tell you, John, that Sinn Féin is prepared to bend over backwards to accommodate gay people, and I mean that sincerely, folks. Right, well, I see. So Sinn Féin is seeking to take power with the ballot box in one hand and a sodomite in the other. Our gay will come, John. <laughs> Dr. Paisley, the Catholic Church is reading from allegations of sexual abuse made against several priests. Quite a few of them have had their clerical colours felt. Do you have anything to say on this matter? Can I tell you here, Mr. Cole? It's not their colours that these papist priests should be wearing back to front. It's their trousers. I am told there are now more priests in McGilligan than there is in the Vatican. Thank God there are no perverts in the Free Presbyterian Church. That's all I've got to say on that matter. Right, so you would agree that many priests seem to spend their Sundays praying on their knees and the rest of the week praying in children? Yes. Uh, well, old Red Sox said himself, the Pope that is, Young people of Ireland, I love you. And what do you think, uh, Dr. Paisley, of Mr. Blair? Well, Mr. Blair is a fine, upstanding Christian politician and a man of high moral principle. And I'm sure he'd make a fine prime minister. And what about his colleague, Councillor Jim Walker? Oh, you mean those two fuckwits from the Belfast City Council? Come, come, Dr. Paisley, weren't they only putting into practice DUP policy on bringing back corporal punishment, for God's sake? We all know what they're at. Let me tell you, Mr. Cole, I would no more trust Councillor Jim Walker with carrying out DUP policy than I would trust O.J. Simpson with my Rhonda. Well, if O.J. Simpson was married to your Rhonda, Dr. Paisley, I think he would cut his own fucking throat. Right now, let's change the subject slightly here. Should boxing be banned? 
We have two retired boxers who are going to debate whether boxing should be banned with the internationally renowned peacemaker himself, Jerry Adams, who of course is here tonight. Uh, Barry McGuigan, surely boxing is a barbaric sport and it must be banned before more young men are killed. Uh, not at all, Mr. Cole. Uh, it provides uh, a disciplined outlet for people like me who had no other goal in life. You mean for people who are crap at racing, driving, hosting chat shows and growing moustaches? Turning to you, Chris Eubank, some unkind critics say that many of your opponents reminded them of Michael Angelo, that is. They spent most of their working life studying up at the ceiling. It's said that if you'd been awarded one more draw, you could have sent the claim in the Littlewoods pools. What do you say to that? Well, hold on a second. I don't regard myself as just another thick, working-class boxer, Mr. Cole. I'm a man of learning and culture. Right, well, that's okay. Well, here, hold on a minute. Who are you calling thick and arrogant, you wanker? At least I don't look like a cross between Sherlock Holmes and Princess Anne. If I were five stone heavier, I'd give you a good clout and a bait. Oh, hold on, Mr. McGuigan. As a student of psychology, I can see that you have an advanced odious complex. An advanced odious... What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, you're a thick little motherfucker. Right, now, let's draw the line under this. Um, it's time to declare a permanent cessation of violence. Um, it is essential that we have all inclusive negotiations and move the uh, process forward to all party talks, and the sooner the better. Jesus Christ, Jerry, I thought Chris Eubank could talk fluent bullshit until I heard you. Right, Jerry Adams, a lot of people would say that you are the main man in the IRA and that you are the IRA leader. Is that true? Um, if you don't withdraw that allegation, Mr. Cole, I will be forced to take action. They haven't gone away, you know. Five thousand six hundred and twenty-three votes. Mullum Marjorie Labour, thirty-seven thousand nine hundred and forty votes. I hereby declare the candidate as duly elected member for Jesus Christ. Tell me this is a nightmare. Mullum is probably going to be the next secondary estate for Northern Ireland, and she's a woman. Um, what's your problem, Ian? Sure, May, he had no balls either. He hadn't even a gust to go down to Drum Cree last year and sort that mess you's prod started. Well, put it this way, beardy buck. Where were you when the Nestlets were crying for support? Um, well, actually, I was down at the caravan in Cushion Doll. And, and even if I wanted to get down to the car park I rode, I hadn't got a car. Well, you've got plenty of transportation when you want to move your bombs around, Jerry. This has been an historic moment in the history of British politics. A Labour victory of landslide proportions. Well, that means you're well and truly fucked in. They don't need the Ulster units anymore, son. Um, you're not by bribing Tony Blair the same way you bribed John Major. And, and that automatically means that Sinn Féin will be allowed at the talks table. Well, well, uh, let me say, uh, if Sinn Féin, IRA, are at the talks table, the DUP most certainly will not be there. Uh, and at least I'm going to be sitting at Westminster, uh, not like you. Uh, you'll be too busy down at the maze handing out shovels to your cohorts. Um, I totally reject what you have just said. Um, I was not down at the maze. However, uh, I was involved in the planning of, uh, I mean, a big part of I was planning my electioneering, that is. Ah, yes. Anything you say, Jerry. Anyhow, how come our votes aren't being counted yet? Why do we have to wait until the day after the elections? Um, because the civil servants are a shy, lazy bastards. Well, they weren't when it was all Protestants. And it was the Unionists that made the decisions at Stormont. By God, they were the days. Look in, and Jerry. Isn't it about time that everyone sat down at the table and got our problems and our province and our people sorted out once and for all? This is a new opportunity, a new dawn with a new Labour government. So let's put our energy into doing what we should do. Well, I have to disagree with what John Hume is waffling about. The only time we're going to get our problems, our province and our people sorted out is if we preserve the union. Labour know what the honest Ulster Protestant is all about. We will not be sold down the river. Shall we gather at the river? Oh, for fuck's sake, shut up, will I? Oh, for fuck's sake, a singing preacher's at it again. Well, let's see how well you sing when Martin takes her seat. And here are the election results for Mid-Ulster. 
Right, well, just fucking shut up till the results are coming and... Um, who do you think you're talking to? Fucking talking to you, all right? For goodness sake, will you just give it over? You're like three mongrels fighting over a bone. What we need here is dialogue. Ah, oh, holy shit, then. I've lost my seat to McGuinness. Sure Ken's not running in your kid's stint, you'd say. No, 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 Wayne. No, that other fucker, Martin. Oh, you mean Art Garfunkel? The Orca Stritter within the IRA? As far as I'm concerned, the people of Ulster have voted for violence. It's a sad day for us all, Ian. Um, commiserations, Willie. Um, uh, bad luck. But at least you've got your singing to fall back on. Well, let me tell you, Mr. Adams, it's a lot more to fall back on than you have. But God willing, the people of Ulster will realise the day, the dreadful mistake that they have made, and I hope they rectify that. Uh, Willie, Willie. Ian, I want to finish what I've got to say to the people of Ulster. Right, Willie, come on, that's it. Now, knock it in the fucking head. I'll knock him in the fucking head if I get the chance. Oh, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Why are you two have been arguing? As if you hadn't already heard. I've just cleaned up West Belfast again with 25,000 votes. Uh, oddly enough, there's only 19,000 Catholics up there. Uh, not bad going, eh? Them old medical cards work a fucking treat. Is that room 1690? It is. Who's that? It's Dick Spring here. Listen in. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, coming down here. Uh, let me tell you, brother. Me being a Dublin is like you were in the size my father were. I know that, I know that, but I do appreciate it. Uh, don't worry, Dickie boy. I'll show you how to win an election. All right, I'll come to your room now. Come in, Dickie, come in. Uh, I hope no one saw you. Uh, no problem. We're used to the backdoor politics down here. Uh, so you want to be the next tea shop, Dickie? That's uh, tea shocking. Uh, uh, I will. It'll be a hell of a shock if we're caught, I can tell you that. Uh, but this could be useful for both of us, you know. Uh, you're, you're scratching mine and I'll be scratching yours. I beg your pardon. Uh, obviously, I mean scratch her back. Um, scratch her back? Scratch her bollocks and watch her back. That's what we do. Excuse me, Mr. Adams. Wash your mouth out. I'm not accustomed to that sort of talk. Um, excuse me? Excuse you, more like it. It's Adams. Jerry Adams. Adams, Adams. You're still supposed to be the big cheese of the IRA. Fuck off, Ian. Right, leave it alone, gentlemen. Uh, Ian's not here to help me win the election. Excuse me, I was just passing the door. I couldn't help but overhearing your conversation about the elections. For goodness sake, that man couldn't get you a seat in a bus. You're one to talk, Mr. Hume. Seat on a bus? Seat on a bus? At least we still have buses. We're not burning them out every night of the week. But look here, John, we're not in Brussels now. So there's no free lunches here, so stay out of it. Look, what we have here is serious problems in Derry that you people don't seem to understand or appreciate. Our unemployment rate is 17.5% higher than the national average. Our earnings are 30% lower. And our social register index is statistically... Oh, fuck up, John. Will 90% you? of the European community. Who's coming to the bar? I'm getting the first round. What sort of round are you talking about, Mr. Adams? Now, seriously, and will you come down to the bar and uh, have a drink with us? All right, Dickie. But there'll be none of that old devil's buttermilk, you know that. I'm sticking to a pure orange. Um, right, what do you all want to drink? Drink! Back! Who's that man there? What is that man making all that racket for? Is he wearing a dog collar? I suppose he's one of those emissaries of the Antichrist and rub. I hate to admit it, in, but you are right for once in your life. He is a priest, but that doesn't mean he's a bad man. Guards! I wonder what they're going to catch him for. Arse! Exactly. I thought so. Um, don't worry about him, man. He's uh, your man, uh, Father Jack Haggett. You know that uh, wee TV programme about priests? Oh, yes. Was that the one with uh, your man, uh, yes, uh, Brendan Smith in it? Yes, I saw that documentary. Um, no, Wayne. You've got it all wrong. This is a comedy about the Catholic Church. Precisely. Um, if you want in, I can introduce you to him. Oh, well, I don't know about that there. I mean, after all that... Back off, you gobshite! Who do you think you're talking to? Do you not realise that I'm a man of the cloth? An ordained minister in the Protestant faith. The only true faith. So you fuck off. 
Right, is this a private fight or can anyone join in? Oh, Bob, what about you? Love a record. Always been a fan of yours for years, you know. I don't like Mondays. The guy don't give a shit what you like. Nobody likes it when I did Band-Aid. And nobody likes it when I ask for them for money. Nobody likes it when I don't wash my hair. Nobody likes it when I split with your woman, Yates. And by the way, it's Sir Bob to you, so shove your drink up your arse. Mom, did, did I offer you a drink? Well, personally, uh, my favourite uh, was Banana Republic. I always thought it was uh, a marvellous song, and I thought it should have been a number one. Oh, Banana Republic, that says it all. Right now, boys, settle down. Who ordered the uh, whiskey? Right, vodka? Right, this is my Guinness here. Uh, there's yours in, it was an orange. Always be an orange son. Right, gentlemen, uh, could we have a bit of order here? Uh, we want to hear what Ian Pizzi has got to say about uh, me winning the election. Right, uh, what I say is, give the people what they want, Dickie. A good, strong leader that knows how to say no surrender. Not an inch. Never, never, never. Forget all that crap, our dick. Just do what we do. Get them to vote early and vote often. <laughs>